First off, we are going to make some prime rib today. And I know all of you are thinking, why is this kid cooking prime rib? Well, because I want to. So first we're gonna pat the rib down to make it dry. So you just wanna kinda like, first rip off some paper towel to use, and then you gotta cut it. Okay, so now we're gonna kind of like give it a good massage with some olive oil. You just want it like probably about a tiny bit, and then on your pan, rub that in, and then just, just get it a good massage like that. <laughs> Dig into it, and then just push. Probably about done with that. You want to place this in to a pan, fat side up, bone side down, so it's facing kind of like that. So now, now we're gonna like kind of cover this in with some salt for some seasoning. And just get it. You kind of want it to be like, like this is the ground outside, and it's just it just snowed overnight. And then you kind of want to massage it into the sides. So this, rub it in and stuff. Grab the mas grab the salt that fell off, and just use that too. And don't bother to clean your hands. Um, before you use the salt, because it's all going to be used, like it's staying on the ribs right now. I'll just give you a close up of me. And then probably after you're done that, then you should wash your hands. Alright, so now we are going to cover this in some pepper, so I'm like add a ton of pepper to it. And then you might want to add some in a little jar. So once you do that, you can kind of like grab some in your hands and then like massage it into the sides of the rib. So now we are gonna put this in, in the oven to like just get to sear it up a bit. And you want it to put it at about how high your oven can go. Ours is at 550 and you want it to be for about 15 minutes in the oven. And don't put the lid on. It's missing a handle. <laughs> so as you can see here, it's the rib is in the oven and it's 14 minutes now because a minute just passed and it's at 550 but it says 525 because we uh, have a convention of it. Okay. So the ribs are now cooked and I just touched the handle and you can already tell that it's full, like pretty much cooked. So if you like any of your arm, grab the tray and kind of pull it out. Now we need to cover it for an hour and 30 minutes at around 325 temperature. Okay, and now we're just gonna shut that and cook 
cook this and see how it says multi you want to get rid of that by pressing it again. Three, one, five, start, timer. So then you want the timer at one. So one hour and 30 minutes, you want that to go. So we've got the um, rib covered in tin foil and someone helped me take it out and cover it. We just filtered out these beef drippings from the leftover sauce. And now we need four tablespoons of the beef dripping. One. Okay, we just measured out the flour here, and now we got it. It's two tablespoons, and we have to put it with the beef dripping. Now we have to stir this with the whisk. And then while we're doing that, we're all, we also have to turn this very left one to four. Now you want a quarter of a cup of red wine. And don't worry if you're cooking your kids this because you're gonna keep on stirring this until the alcohol smell is gone and then it should be alcohol free. Now we add half a cup of this ch chicken broth butt. You'd rather get beef broth but since we're in quarantine, we can't really get that right now. So you're actually supposed to add half a cup <laughs> <laughs> and I poured the two cups straight away. And you're supposed to do it slowly. But I did it. Because why not? Okay. Now we have one tablespoon of Worcester shop. Shop a bit. Now we gotta just kinda stir this around for about four to five minutes. Straight until it like kinda thickens. And then you should be good to go. So this is the final meal. We got the fries, the garlic bread, and the the beans here and this is the prime rib we were making we also cooked all of these alongside with the rib now this is also the au jus we were making with the weird type of sauce I forgot the name of and we're just gonna pour a bit And now I will be showing you my reaction of eating this. Here we go. Mm. Okay. My cottage cheese always gets rotten. How do I fix it? Well, you kind of want to leave some of the plastic on, Luke, and then you want to like, like you, if you want to like eat it, you have to take a bit, but then leave it on and then flip it over upside down on a saucer and it'll last longer. Nice, I will do that next time I have some cottage cheese. How do I make my milk not rotten? It always doesn't last long, Charlie. 
Well, to fix up your milk there, Luke, you gotta add half a teaspoon of salt and it will last longer for you next time you have milk. Yay! I love milk! And those were some food tips from Auntie Mary. Make sure you like and subscribe and comment down below if you enjoyed any of these meals that I made. And also try to make them as well as you can. Those are very good meals. <laughs> Oh no. Oh no. <laughs>